Okay, so it's all normal. Very. Expected every 28 days, give or take, for the next 30 years. Ugh, great. You want burgers? Hot dogs? Some chicken? You know, which is a lot of werewolves, right? A lot of, a lot of werewolves. Not Too a, many yeah, werewolves. There, there, there is not enough. I, I feel like there's not enough were cat movies. I mean, you got cat people and stuff like that. Just not enough. You know, we need to focus more on were cats. Maybe. You know, what about other animals in the animal kingdom? Like what the a, fuck are were cats? It'd be like a person who turns into a cat. You know, cat people. Is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, it could be like a were puma or something. I'm just saying, you know, focus on the other animals of the kingdom, like like a were giraffe. You know, could you imagine how terrifying that would be to see a trans uh, like a transformation scene where some guy turns into a giraffe, just like, his fucking neck strangles out to the sky and shit. It'd be like, like that. a 15 minute like It'd transition. Be fucking scene. horrifying, right? Yes. <laughs> That'd be scary. Were giraffe, were hippo, you know. Okay, hippos are already where, okay? <laughs> <laughs> hippos are already scary. <laughs> you know why, right? Why? Because more people, more hippo, hippos kill more people <laughs> in a year than sharks. I thought you were about to say more hippos die from hippo attacks. <laughs> no, that's not what I meant. No, more people die from hippo attacks than they do shark attacks in a year. And more people, what was I going to say? <laughs> More people are killed by sharks in a year than plane crashes. Okay, okay. But still, a were hippo, that would be, that that might be hilarious, though. It'd be bulky. Just <laughs> explodes out. And There'd it's be just a, a lot of guts. That's true. That's true. Now I just want to see somebody turn into a giraffe, though. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, you may be wondering what the fuck we're talking about. Uh, welcome to Night of the Horrorphile. That's right. Uh, we are a horror movie podcast or and genre film podcast that takes a horror movie or genre film and shows it to my beautiful wife, Brittany, who gives us her thoughts, sometimes negative, sometimes positive. <laughs> we have a good time here. Um. Are we the most do vulgar we, podcast? Do we have a good time? I I assume. I think I'm having a good time. <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes I'm not having Sometimes. a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Brittany is not having a good time. Uh, what was the last not good time you had? I don't know, like last week or some shit. Wolven? Yeah. Wolven was very weird because you could tell we were both like, this is a good movie somewhere. Like, <laughs> both of us were like, this is a good movie if it was a completely different movie than yeah. the movie that it is. <laughs> that doesn't make Sometimes sense. Sometimes that's how it was here on Night of the Horror File. Um, but okay. anyway. <laughs> what did you ask me? <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> It is the holidays. We are just coming off of Thanksgiving. Ugh. Oh, my God. You guys may be wondering why I didn't do a Thanksgiving episode this year, you know. You could have you could have done Thanksgiving. You could have done uh, uh, one of the Texas Chainsaw Massacres as, as the, uh, a family motive. And it's like, didn't I ever do that? Yeah, and I just am just not digging the holidays this year, man. Why? I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm just not digging it. Like, I'm enjoying buying the kids shit. That's always fun. <laughs> but, like, as far as, like, just the holiday stuff, just, nah, man. Is it because they started putting Christmas trees out before Halloween? I think so. I think that's what did it. I think it fucking just shot my holiday spirit in the face. Like, because, like, as soon as I walk the aisles, like, the next day, the next day after Halloween, where I'm like, I'm going to go get some Halloween merch on sale. And I just walk in and it's just all Christmas. There's no Halloween shit to be found. <laughs> that was sad. It's almost the last straw, you know? 
Like, I'm just like, you know, society, it, it, it's driving me further into the mountains, into the <laughs> <laughs> off the grid and just living as a mountain man who looks more beard than man, you know, <laughs> like, more beard than man. Well, you better get to grow. It looks like babe. one of those gnomes wandering around. <laughs> I will tell you, those gnomes have brought me great joy these holiday season. There's these Scandinavian oh, yeah. gnomes that I've been collecting this year <laughs> and they're not very popular. So they're like six, seven bucks a pop. And I've been it's just. God, I don't know what it is. I think it's just the purity of them. Just these little innocent gnomes just being all holiday themed and just like, oh, oh, oh. Do you aspire to look like that one day? I don't know. That's probably what I'm going to look like when I get old. Just all beard and a nose poking out under a hat. Just So if your beard goes gray, are you going to let it go gray? Yeah. Good. I don't think it will, though, because I, I, I have weird genes where we just keep our blonde hair. I, I don't know. Your dad's not 80 yet. Oh, good point. My dad's still young. <laughs> so we have nothing to compare it to. Right. But anyway, that's an, what are we? <laughs> we're not even on the subject. Well, again, welcome to Night of the Horror File. Uh, what did we watch this week? Ginger Snaps. That's right. We watched Ginger Snaps. Kind of a feminist movie this this week, I think. I, I really do think so. I don't know. I enjoy that stuff. You know, I'll talk about the negatives people have, but I, I think it's a good, a good example of how a feminist movie can be really good. And I say a good example because I know a lot of people are like, well, there are really good feminist horror movies. I know, but they're, some of them just feel like... I don't know. <laughs> just it feels like somebody, some dude wrote it, even though like most of these feminist horror movies that come out, females have worked on it. But it just feels like a dude wrote some of these things. You know, I don't know what it is. I think it's because they're trying to pander. To, oh, I see yeah. what you mean. I thought you were saying this one. And I was no, like, no, this what? one feels great. And a female wrote this one. Okay, uh, a, a male directed it. But, but I, I do. I do think it's a good example of how horror um, uh, how feminist horror can really go great, you know, uh, especially like the other example I would say that is on par with this is Jennifer's body, which is not always, I never, I didn't really hold that movie up, um, very high, yeah, highly and stuff. But the, in recent years, I've reevaluated it and it's actually a genuinely really good movie that I think needs, uh, need to rewatch, but we'll kind of talk about people's negatives as we go. So by the year 2000, the werewolf had been an established horror staple for decades. Uh, man turning into beast. Uh, the word man being the most shared thing in all of our werewolf movies this <laughs> month, really. Yeah. Except for maybe the howling. But the, the, that wasn't necessarily the focal point of the movie. It wasn't all about the female werewolves. They were right. just kind of a they were means there. to an end. Yeah. Yeah. But today's feature, Ginger Snaps, stands out amongst the usual werewolf horror films. Because um, first off, it tosses out all the rules. Mm -hmm. Like this one very much wants to, it, it exists in its own world. You right. Know, you don't feel like it's aping off of like an American werewolf in London or the howling. You really don't feel like it's trying to be those other movies, which is great. Right. You know? I think that's when a werewolf movie is at its strongest when it's not trying to be these other movies. <laughs> yes. Which kind of confused people because by the year 2000, you know, people were looking for an American werewolf in London type werewolf movies, which this really isn't. It does have some black humor, but it's not a full blown comedy like that one was. And I think a lot of people who don't like this movie are looking for that. Right. And right. That's not what this is. <laughs> and also, you know, you don't have a cult here. You don't have a curse or anything like that. A bite still transfers the virus. That's about the only shared thing it really has in common with everything. Uh, the full moon necessarily isn't, completely they mention it yeah but that's it seems I think it was like a coincidence yeah and plus i think what it really coincides with is the lunar cycle which we'll get to the metaphors in this movie because this movie is heavy with metaphors uh comparing you know being a werewolf to the menstrual cycle like you know that's right. where the feminist aspects come in and i think they do a really good job there but also what i really like is it's also com compared to like an std later on yeah. You know, I like that, especially in a scene we'll get to here in a little while that I think is it's excellently done. Um, also, uh, the change in this one is drawn, you know, the change, the metamorphosis or the the, the transformation, it's drawn out. Mm -hmm. it, I would I would argue that this entire movie is a transformation scene. I agree. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I actually kind of like that. And, uh, you know, 
we I've already said it a million times already, but Ginger Snaps uses lycanthropy as a metaphor for the weirdest time we all go through in high school, especially <laughs> for women. <laughs> You know, yes. uh, especially women, um, writer, director, John Fawcett, he kind of had this in mind when he set out to make a horror movie. And now he wanted to focus on metamorphosis. The concept for Ginger Snap started way back in 95 uh, while working with a uh, screenwriter, Karen Walton. Now, actually, Walton was reluctant, reluctant to actually write this. Or to write a horror movie to begin with due to, uh, you know, the genre's portrayal of women and the less respected place horror as a genre has in cinema. Oh, yeah. You know, and horror is still the gutter genre, you know, <laughs> right. as Mick Garris once said. But uh, Fawcett convinced her by explaining how he wanted to reinvent the game here. And uh, that may sound like... Did they really reinvent anything with Ginger Snaps? And I, I really think they did. Oh, yeah. Especially at the time. Because you got to consider this was mm, the year 2000. This is the start <laughs> of the new millennium, you know. And it's it, you'd have to go back and really look at what we had in terms of horror. You know, um, feminist horror really wasn't a thing. You know, you did have quite a few uh, horror movies directed by women. Um not – you could probably count on your hand right. how many of those were. But, <laughs> but feminist movies like that, like this today, it's kind of – it's kind of ahead of its time. You know, I'd say if uh, Ginger Snaps was released today, it'd probably have more than just a cult following that it has. I think it would be uh, much more praised. Not saying it's not praised. It really is. But anyway. <laughs> anyway, financial trouble did keep this from taking off, however – uh, Trimark had agreed to co-finance the film uh, and it was slated to start shooting in 98, but negotiations failed and Trimark dropped the film. Also, throwing funding into question was the fact that around 99, a little thing called Columbine happened. <laughs> so right. for a movie depicting violence against teenagers and violence <laughs> done by teenagers, uh, I, that was really hard to get off the ground. Uh, uh, I, see. I don't know if you guys remember... But for those of us who went through who were going to school during Columbine, there is a period of time, kind of like 9-11. You know, there's a period of time where you have before 9-11 and after 9-11. Yeah. <laughs> those are two yeah. distinct periods of time. Kind of the same when Columbine happened. And it's still kind of the same. You had before and then after. Yeah. You know, after Columbine, it was really hard to get a movie depicting teenagers doing violence against each other. I would argue – Besides your indie affairs, you really didn't see violence against kids until like now. You know, nowadays we're mm -hmm. just now getting this shit. Right. Um, after Columbine, though, it was all, you know, your teenagers were portrayed by like fucking 50 year olds. <laughs> <laughs> and you never had violence at school or anything like that right after. The ones that you did have, they were kind of relegated to the back shelves, you know, of your video store. Right, right. Because they didn't want to. Shove that in people's faces. Well, sure. yeah, exactly. You know, even though, nah, never mind. We'd have to do a whole. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't want to go into the whole fucking fuck up that Columbine was. But anyway, but luckily, Lionsgate did pick it up and uh, distributed it. And uh, with a budget of $4.5 million. Yes, this is kind of low wow. budget for the time. We got ginger <laughs> snaps. You say low budget, and I'm like, uh, and that's no, a lot of it's money. It's kind of hard to point that out because I know it's so weird, especially nowadays when you talk about low budget movies that are like in the theaters, it's like $10 million. <laughs> It's so weird to think about like Blumhouse, you know, some people still give them shit because they're like the premier independent stu film studio, which their indie films cost around 10 million to make. Oh, my God. So you're like, wait, is it? <laughs> is it really? <laughs> but anyway, with lots to discuss, let's dive into Ginger Snaps from the year 2000. I didn't even realize it was 2000. I know. Isn't it weird? I don't know why. It seems very uh timeless. Uh, they did a good job at making yeah. this hold up. Like, like you, you, you think think back at the like uh, some of those horror movies or just movies in general from the year two thousand. You watch those things; they don't hold up. <laughs> like, right. <laughs> it definitely feels like an early aught movie, especially because this movie does not have any like new metal stanking up the place. <laughs> You're right. It does. Yeah, there, there's a little bit, but not like. There's no Slipknot fucking, there's no Rob Zombie. <laughs> yeah, you don't have any of that, you know. 
<laughs> As we listen to that song today. <laughs> I know. I love Rob Zombie, but there was a time in the 2000s where you could not escape that song. It popped up in everything. Montregula. <laughs> You're like, this does not even... what. <laughs> It doesn't even go here. They're like at a dinner scene somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put on the new record by Rob Zombie. <laughs> what? Sir Robert Zombie put out a new record today. <laughs> what the? I don't think they said that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think it doesn't quite feel the year it was made. And it, it okay. may be because it's Canadian. Oh. This is a very Canadian film. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, so the movie starts with a dog killing that was way over dramatized. Then we meet sisters you know, that are gonna kill you <laughs> by looking at you with their glare. Like, yeah, I that teenage honestly, glare. I honestly would not mind because these two were my type back in the years. <laughs> <laughs> these are my two types of girls that I was attracted to. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> wasn't that just girls? Uh, <laughs> yeah okay good point good point you know while you guys were experiencing the werewolf uh, of puberty <laughs> i was experienced boners just 24 7 you know guys really have it easy <laughs> we yeah. get acne and boners <laughs> we turn into werewolves and we just we masturbate a lot like that's about it like Ugh. that's really what we got we get a little angry at things <laughs> that's about it unnecessarily unnecessarily angry but anyway uh, lots of fans like to trash the early 2000s we just kind of discussed about it for the horror that it produced and while yes there were, we were ripe in scream-esque territory with all the fucking sequels i think scream 3 was popping up around this time uh creed and whatnot <laughs> <laughs> That was another band you couldn't escape in the early 2000s. <laughs> We're all wide open. Out oh there. So now. Welcome to the hands. Anyway. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can stop that. <laughs> but yes, you had the sequels and you had the doll slashers and just the fucking shitty looking CGI horror movies. <laughs> but there were a big amount of inventive horror flicks out there. You know, American Psycho. Uh, One of my favorites. Yeah, Final Destination, The Cell, Hollow Man. A lot of these kind of fell under everybody's radar because, well, critics kind of panned them into the fucking ground. And a lot of people weren't exactly excited about a movie like American Psycho. <laughs> but why ever not? <laughs> why did I say it like that? No, I don't can, know. I think you went back to the people playing the Robert Zombie <laughs> record. So Robert Zombie has a new one now. <laughs> this one's about zombies. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> can you guys tell I'm not exactly a Robert Zombie fan? <laughs> Robert Zombie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Rob Zombie. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, you know, it felt a lot of these fell under everybody's radar, including Ginger Snaps. So this one definitely slipped under everybody's radar at the time, even though well, I'll discuss it at the end of the show. But like this, they received a lot of praise from critics and stuff like that. But anyway, the whole metaphor for puberty, which hadn't been smartly used since 1998's Disturbing Behavior. Which is a movie we should very much cover. It is a very good movie. <laughs> um, and of course, it was expertly deployed by Brian De Palma in 1976's Carrie. You oh, know. my favorite. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're just naming all my favorite movies. Yeah, yeah. You know, it hadn't re we hadn't really seen a smart uh, way of using uh, puberty and coming of age in a horror movie since then. Since like the 90s and stuff. It's a form of horror that people either love or hate. Yeah, you know, it it either like gets you, and you kind of remember the time when you were a teenager, or you just are I don't know a movie bro. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> like I don't have time to talk about that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want. I don't want my my horror movies stunk up by all these women folk. <laughs> Why ain't they naked and getting murdered? That's what you're saying. <laughs> That's how you sound on Twitter, you guys. Not all of you. Our listeners are very smart. But anyway. <laughs> but, but, you know, that was kind of the consensus. I don't need this girl shit crapping up my horror movie. Right. That's still kind of the consensus today. You you make a movie like this. And I know I said Ginger Snaps would have been well received back in the day. Yeah. Or well received now if it came out now. But I'm not sure. 
Because it seems like when it when something like this comes out, people are like, why is my werewolf movie got women in it? <laughs> why is the Ghostbusters all female? Like, I don't know, yes. man, because females fucking exist and it's kind of fun. <laughs> I don't know. Am I the only one that enjoys that? <laughs> Like if they came out tomorrow and they were like, we're redoing Escape from New York and and fucking uh, Gail Godot's. Go- no, wait, wait, wait. Fuck Gail Godot. She can't act. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Who's sorry. the one that plays Kelly? Oh, yeah. Like if if uh, Dana De Lorenzo was announced to play uh, Snake Plissken. Oh, yeah. I'd be all for it. Oh, yeah. That'd be cool as fuck. <laughs> like, I guess I think I'm I'm alone in that. Maybe Britney is enjoy uh, might enjoy I, that. I would enjoy it more than the original. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Go back and listen to our Escape from New York episode to hear what that one guy who commented on our podcast was really angry about. What was he angry about? He was like, worst, worst coverage of Escape from New York ever. All they did was talk about the oh, buttholes. Right. I was like, if that isn't. If that isn't a fucking sell for this show, I don't know what <laughs> is. We got like a hundred extra listeners off of that fucking call. <laughs> but anyway, um, but but anyway, I, I think honestly, th- this kind of stuff, if you just climb off your fucking weird high horse for a second, uh, it's it's enjoyable. Oh, yeah. And uh, Ginger Snaps, I feel, is very relatable, whether you're uh, a male or a female. We all went through the horrors of puberty. Oh I think we can God. all remember it, especially women. I I don't know how puberty was on you. I kind of explained it to me. I was just <laughs> masturbating at any second, like everywhere, just jerking off, man. Well, if I if I went to a funeral, I might jerk off in the bathroom. That's how bad puberty was for me. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. I don't know. I started my period when I was 12, so yeah. I like... By the time I got to high school, it was pretty, Mm -hmm. it was there. Did you turn into a werewolf? I can't tell you that. (laughs) Oh, shit. Is that what happens? Do women turn into werewolves (laughs) when they hit their periods? I don't know. We've been together a long time. (laughs) I'll I'll talk about later how, like, the fact that, like, some of these guys on Twitter, and it's always guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> but when when you're about to make a comment, if you see all the negative comments that have been made before your negative comment all come from white, straight males, and you're a white, straight male, you might just want to take a back seat. I, I, you know, the white, <laughs> ma- the white, straight male comment has been made. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we don't need more. <laughs> we didn't need the ones no. in the first place. Because that's the only ones who's complain about shit like this. But anyway. 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 What do they want us to do? Like, make- Not exist. You should be making babies and staying out of the horror movies. <laughs> except if we are going to be brutally murdered. <laughs> and show boobies. And show boobies. That <laughs> really is what they're saying. I know. <laughs> Isn't that fucking weird when you put it out like that? It's yes. like, no. I want my women to be quiet in my movies. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, sorry. She can, she can be a waitress. That's fine. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Anyway, so the movie starts with a dog killing that was way over dramatized. Then we get to meet sisters Bridget and Ginger. They're talking about how they're going to kill themselves. Ginger says that suicide is the ultimate fuck you to them, <laughs> I guess, society. Mm hmm. And they have some kind of pact to kill themselves when they turn 16 or move away from the suburbs. I, you know, I can't relate. You know, me and my friends never made a, you know, a suicide pact. But honestly, (laughs) honestly, like that's just because no one brought it up. (laughs) (laughs) What? When you're a teenager, you are, you have a weird, maybe not you, (laughs) but me and my friends and the girls that I knew and hung out with. We all had this weird flirtation kind of fascination with death, you know, especially when you're a fucking heavy metal kid who watches horror movies 24 seven. You're constantly like, oh, death is the ultimate fuck you, man. Is it, though? I don't even know what I was talking about. Like, I couldn't (laughs) even begin to tell you what it was. I just remember being fascinated by the act of dying, you know, like being fascinated with all that. Now, honestly. I liked myself too much to kill myself <laughs> at the time, you know, it give me about a decade later, but, <laughs> but <laughs> oh my God, I think I'm the only person who makes fun of their own suicide attempt, but, 
<laughs> You're horrible. I'm very much horrible. But, you know, I, I think it's kind of, I don't know. I feel like this is like, it's kind of normal. Sure. It's a healthy fascination with death. You know, you never really fantasized about death a little bit, you know. No. I was having a good time, okay? Yeah, we were. <laughs> we were the unfuckables in school. So. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. I probably could have had sex if I wasn't so weird. I remember someone yeah. telling me that after we had all graduated. And and mind you, this is a time when it's it wasn't cool to be me. Nowadays, <laughs> if I was like this back then, it, I probably would have been pulling all sorts of tail. But... <laughs> Ew. It, this, <laughs> this, we, I am living in the Mecca of nerd <laughs> where we now rule the world. <laughs> and it is great. I'm considered sexy for, <laughs> for all the stupid shit. <laughs> but anyway. It's not the stupid shit. It's because you're funny. Is it? Yeah. Is it the funniness? Yeah. Oh. The funniness used to get my ass kicked a lot by the dudes. Because the one thing, uh, uh, you know, those jockey dudes hated was being made f to feel dumb. Yeah. He said something I don't understand. <laughs> Beat the <laughs> shit out of him. It's so fucking true. <laughs> it is, man. That, that's what was happening to me in high school. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to. No, it's fine. Fucking <laughs> high school is so long ago. <laughs> But um, no, I don't know really how it was for women. So watching this movie, you know, watching this movie, I honestly don't know if like this is how it is. You know, I can't relate to the girls in this movie. I will. I will tell you if I relate or not. If I related yeah. as as we go through. Yeah, the that's movie. that's really what I was kind of I was kind of getting at. Yeah. Is maybe you can fill us in on that side of the story here because. Yeah. Does anybody really want to hear me talk about the feminist gays? <laughs> like, does anybody want to hear that kind of shit coming out of my mouth? I think people would much prefer to hear it from you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway. I agree. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, one thing to note, though, as I said, Ginger Snaps is gloriously Canadian. It, it's got that nice melodramatic feel, you know, melodrama is what we got going on here. This came out around the same time Book of Shadows did. And I don't know if you feel it, but I feel like those have the same kind of feeling to them. Remember remember uh, Blair Witch 2 that yeah. we watched back in the day that you really liked? It, it yeah. has that same melodramatic feel going on. I guess so, yeah. Yeah, Canadians were experts at that, man. You had Degrassi? <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. Brittany loved Degrassi. <laughs> and I think this kind of has a feel. Like if you threw a werewolf into Degrassi, here we go. I do agree with that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, yes. I, I don't know. I think the only time I like melodrama is when it's in my horror movies. It seems like that's when I'm like, yeah, you know, this is fun. I like this. This is good. It's easy. You know, it's easy drama. <laughs> that's really funny because I like all those rom-coms which is kind of like a melodrama and you hate them but the yeah, only dude. difference is that's a comedy and this is a horror and I'll, movie. I'll correct you again i don't hate those rom-coms <laughs> i just never remember them and so when someone's like oh come on there's got to be one rom-com it's like if i remembered it maybe <laughs> i like matthew mcconaughey take yeah one of those <laughs> just, I, I like that actor so one of those movies that he's in he was in like he was a king in the mellow or the fucking melodramatic rom com, wasn't he? Mm. That was like his bread and butter for a good period of time because you had that movie Failure to Launch. Uh, oh, I didn't watch that. You movie. You had uh, How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days. Yes, one of my like favorites. That. Yes, something else he was in. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, but uh, principal photography for the Ginger Snaps took place between October 25th and December 6th, 1999, making it the perfect November movie. Uh, spread out between three of Toronto, Canada's suburbs, in fact. So uh, these are actual neighborhoods that you're seeing this uh, shot in. However, being that it was Toronto in the winter and shooting 16 hours a day, six days a week meant that sicknesses would make their rounds among the cast and crew. So everybody was constantly just fucking sick. Oh, <laughs> like, no. So then our opening credit scene, it's a bunch of photos of the that the girls have taken where they portray people that have been killed. Oh, excuse me. And these photos are shown in one of their classes. Mm -hmm. And they're 
teacher is absolutely fucking pissed off. It's so funny because he fucking st- <laughs> they're really proud of this. <laughs> he yes. stops the fucking slide projection. He's like, um, all right then. Um, <laughs> he's like, you guys need to go to the ga- the guidance <laughs> yeah, counselor. <laughs> he's fucking appalled, which. I can relate to this situation. I can (laughs) relate to this because I remember when we turned in for a student film project, you know, shoot a movie, shoot a fun movie. Everybody was shooting like, oh, the day I picked the flowers. Like, no, me and my (laughs) friends were like, oh, the day the flowers fucking died. (laughs) Dig through the ditches. (laughs) (laughs) But seriously. That was your slideshow song? (laughs) Yeah, well, we showed a, we made a movie about a guy getting his brains blown out. And That's we, not appropriate. We, we made homemade squibs and everything. And I remember the teacher giving us a B. Right. But not showing the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, you did really good. Um, looked realistic. <laughs> looked realistic. I can't show this. <laughs> so hey, we at least you got a B. Yeah, we got a B. We were happy. <laughs> Best review I'll probably ever have of one of my movies. <laughs> So then the girls have to go play lacrosse, like in their gym class or whatever. Mm -hmm. And Ginger's being hit on by these uh, skeezy dudes or whatever. And uh, Bridget ends up getting pushed face first into a dead dog. Did you ever get pushed face first into a dead dog? No. I'm not talking about one of the dudes you really didn't want to make out with. Hey, I didn't make out with anybody I didn't want to make out oh, with. Okay, see, that's a, well, that's good, actually. That's, <laughs> that's a positive high school experience. Like, the getting hit on by dudes that you're like, oh, why would they talk to me? Like, ugh, I don't like them or whatever. And then turning around and, like, actually going out with one of those guys. Uh-huh. Yeah, that's pretty on point. <laughs> that's on point. <laughs> uh, attention. Uh-huh. Are you say no? So if was some girl you girl group you didn't like or whatever, mm-hmm. but one of them wanted to like make out with you, would you not make out oh, with them? Oh, I got a story for you. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I was one of the unfuckables. Yes, but <laughs> but that didn't stop one of the popular cheerleader girls. Not making out for first of all, don't 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 confuse this as one of those stories where oh fuck now Lee's making up shit about his high school days. <laughs> no no no, this isn't like a, oh we fucked. No no no, um, they didn't. <laughs> nobody <laughs> fucked Lee back in the day. No, that didn't stop her from being interested in my movie knowledge because she liked movies too under the radar. Right, that right. was the thing in high school. You didn't let on that you were a nerd in my time. But, you didn't let on that you liked anything back in the no, day. No, I, I picked my friends very strategically. You know, yeah. <laughs> I had my circle and then a few well wishers. I, I was, I was a weird enigma in high school. Like high school was great for me. Like it wasn't so bad. You know, the 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 picking ons and the, the fucking bullying and shit that kind of stopped in middle school. Yeah, like at the end of middle school, that all stopped. High school, I was, I wasn't popular. But I was well known. Right. I don't know if that makes any sense. Like, oh, yeah. hey, there's Lee. You know, he's okay. He's a cool guy. <laughs> like, so <laughs> Just don't mess with him. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So she would talk to me about movies on my lunch period. Mm-hmm. Like, but that was it. That was the only thing she'd do. Yeah. Like, because she would ask for movie uh, suggestions and shit like that. But, yes, that is why <laughs> I fucking did it. It was attention. Yes, you know? exactly. And I totally understand that point of view you know like at the, any attention is good attention in high school <laughs> yes. which is kind of scary when you consider you know very the scary. attention you can get in high school it's very scary yeah. that's not good don't do that oh, okay i mean hopefully nobody in high school is listening to us but i don't know you never know i don't <laughs> feel like they should be although well high school yeah we're okay for high schoolers i think are we are we no oh um, well, if anybody in high school is listening right now, remember, if it grows from the ground, you're a OK. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> I wasn't uh, referring to drugs. <laughs> well, I will. <laughs> but <laughs> well, I, and that helps, you know, dicks don't grow out of the ground. So <laughs> you're not OK. <laughs> Vaginas don't either. Yeah, Don't ever trust anyone's genitals, kids. Just don't <laughs> trust the genitals. <laughs> That's the biggest word of advice I can give you. Although I never had sex in high school, so I can't really, can't relate. But anyway, <laughs> don't take advice from me, children. 
<laughs> I smoked a lot of weed and watched a lot of movies. <laughs> So I kind of know how sex works. <laughs> like, you know, I, I watched the movies, you know, <laughs> I knew, I knew that. <laughs> no, you didn't. <laughs> oh that, God. That's like saying, the, <clears throat> I watched this movie. So now I'm a director of photography. <laughs> <laughs> do people do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they do that with porn too. Oh God. I watched a lot of porn. I know how to make these moves. No, the fuck you don't. I do think the amount of porn I've watched over my years of being alive, I do think I could probably make a really good porno. <laughs> like I know oh, shots to make and a stuff. Porno? Yeah, I can yeah. make a really good porn. It, we've gotten really weird. <laughs> Just keep going. Keep going. All right. So <clears throat> I feel like at first with this angst ridden obsession with death, you might be wanting to roll your eyes and stuff. But like I said, I had the same weird, goofy obsession with death, so uh, this is kind of relatable to me. But what really glues this thing together, though, I feel like is our sisters here. Yeah. You know, uh, each gets their own kind of unique story arc as we go, and they really start to grow on you. Um, like I said, you know, at first you're like, oh, God. <laughs> oh, God, I knew some of these people in high school. <laughs> fucking trying to make it all, you know dramatized and oh look at this uh, fucking god damn it <laughs> anyway <clears throat> I, I don't know why someone's talking like that <laughs> I remember my days in high school <laughs> did you po smoke 50 uh, yeah, I was gonna day? say Ernie the fucking smoke addict <laughs> anyway uh, but these opening photos were shot at a real neighborhood you know which drew a crowd <laughs> Of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, making John Fawcett was a little worried about what everyone would think. But from what I read, you know, it really wasn't a big deal. People just thought it was neat. One of the homeowners, though, let Catherine Isabel use her basement. Uh, Catherine Isabel, who plays uh, Ginger, okay. uh, she let her use her basement as a changing room, but the crew would have to distract this lady's like four year old daughter. Because <laughs> <Yes. laughs> you couldn't have just Catherine Isabel wandering around fucking blood covered. There is a story she told. Uh, I think she went to grab something to drink or something somewhere, and she had blood just all over her. And people thought she got beat up. Oh, <laughs> no. I love those stories where it's like, well, I'm hungry, so I'm going to go get something to eat. You just fucking coat it in blood. <laughs> well, I'll sometimes number you forget. two <laughs> with cheese. <laughs> but anyway, Emily Perkins, though. I, I really like Emily Perkins in this movie, who plays Bridget. Yeah. Of course, Perkins is remembered by fans of our show, probably, for her role as Beverly Marsh in the 1990 miniseries It. Uh, now you may notice she's wearing a wig. <laughs> like, oh yeah. She's very much wearing a wig. It's very obvious, but that's because she had auditioned for ginger snaps, but hadn't heard anything from anybody after like a month, a yeah. month or two. And so, you know, she doesn't have, she hasn't heard anything back from that. She has no roles coming up. So she's like, well, I've always wanted to shave my head. Oh, geez. So I'm just going to go fucking do it. Let's just do it. <laughs> yeah. Like a week after she shaves her head, they call. <laughs> <laughs> like her like, hey, the director wants to meet with you. You're on the list. And she's like, I need to tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> like, so they fitted her with a wig, which it's not terrible. But if you if you've seen Emily Perkins before, you know, like, what the fuck? <laughs> Because she's in a caveman wig in this fucking movie. Yes. <laughs> Which I think, I think they kind of went with that. And plus her big furry coats that she wears and stuff. The fur line coats and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think she's supposed to kind of seem like a beast herself. And maybe kind of some foreshadowing to her herself becoming a werewolf at a later time. Um, which we really don't get that till the sequel. So I don't, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> no, I think they just did the dynamic of the sisters. Like you've got the slutty one and then you've got the the conservative one. Yeah. Which is really cool because like, I feel like the, I never had a, well, I was never, I never had a vagina and had a sister. <laughs> so I, mean, I have sisters. <laughs> you were about to say I never had. I never had a sister. You have two sisters. <laughs> you do. I admit I never had this cool relationship. I, well, I yeah. never had that. So I don't know. Would would you get along with your sister even though she's fucking like she's the complete almost the complete opposite of you? Um, it depends on what kind of family dynamic you have. True. Although they're very much the same. Yes. Like in like 
I don't know, an introspective kind of way. You know, they're they're very much the same person, except for like where they fit in with the cliques at high school, I guess is what you'd say. Yeah. Although, are we <laughs> okay, okay, I might have read this a little <laughs> wrong with this movie, but is Bridget supposed to not be popular at the beginning of this movie? Yeah. She's not popular? No. I don't feel like that tracks. Because you look at Catherine Isabel in this fucking movie. <laughs> You're like, why wouldn't she be one of the popular kids? Are you talking about Bridget or Ginger? Ginger. Oh, I thought you were talking about Bridget. No, Bridget is Kimberly Perkins. Oh, okay. Who, we are dangerously close to getting a who's on first bit going <laughs> yes. here. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think that... Yes, that she is a popular girl. Oh, okay, okay. But she's going to choose her sister over the popular kids. Which is really sweet. Like, yes. Th th and that's what I mean by, I think, uh, what saves this movie from being just way too boring is the sisters and the relationship. And, and it really does show, like, the... Uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the the, the, the the fucking tight wire you have to walk between popularity and fucking loving your sister and family yeah. and shit like that. Oh, yeah. I feel like things are a lot harder for girls than people make it out to be in high school. You know? Oh, yeah. People tend to, like, make high school out to be hard on everybody and just the same amount of, like, difficulty for girls and boys. But I think it's a it's a real real hellhole for girls <laughs> and and not even like your sister but like even like your best friend because i had friends that i was friends with in middle school and then we get into high school and it's like oh shit we don't like the same things anymore because there's more clubs there's more activities and stuff like that and depending on what activity you do you fall into a certain clique and and then you get shit for being uh, you get shit on for being friends like the cheerleader gets shit on for being friends with the with the stoner girl. Yeah. Well, that kind of relates back to my story of the the popular cheerleader girl who didn't want anybody to know that she was asking me for movie advice. Yeah. 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 Like th I was friends with the football player, dude, and we were just friends. Oh, automatically. Now, correct me if I'm wrong again, because I'm a guy, <laughs> but automatically that meant you were fucking him. Right. Like, I remember that. Right. Because we had a class together and I helped him with work or whatever, or with his math work. And so automatically we were, we were having sex and that was not good for his reputation. So he couldn't talk to me outside of that class. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. High school is hell. <laughs> yeah. Fuck that shit. And, and any guy friend, any guy friend that I had, I was fucking him. Really? Any guy friend. Yes. Wow. That That's just how it went. If I saw somebody in the hallway and I said hi to him. That you old, now you're fucking him. Yep. <laughs> wow. Yes. Wow. See, that's what I mean by that. I, I do think that high school is much harder. I don't know. I think high school just sucked big one. Yeah. Man, I, I if you ever meet anyone who looks back and is, is just so fond of their high school times and wish it could go back, don't trust that person. <laughs> that person is out of their mind. <laughs> <laughs> right. So later the girls are having dinner and their mom is trying to help Ginger figure out her back pain. And her mom gets excited when she thinks it's cramps, which why, we do find out it is cramps. Why do moms get excited about the period? Is that I a thing? I don't know. My mom wasn't excited about the period. I was like 12. So I go in and I'm like, mom, I think I started my period. <laughs> She's like, okay. <laughs> I'm like, uh, I need some help here. She's like, uh. <laughs> Get some pads. I don't know how to put this on. <laughs> oh, but and it, it wasn't like, like I had fucking YouTube to show me how to do yeah, it. Mimi Rogers, though, in this movie as the mom is like this close to fucking throwing a party. Yeah. Like, yes. like, she is overly <laughs> excited for this thing. Yes. It's horrible. Like, <laughs> not horrible, but like very embarrassing for the girl. Talk about something that dudes did not understand. Like coming from the dude point of view. Like we thought it was fucking scary, like which, which I'll get to what Ginger represents at the end of the show. But uh, like we thought it was the fucking most scariest thing ever. Like you're talking they bleed for a few days, like for days and they don't die. Like, what is that shit? Because here's the problem. And I don't know if it's still the same way in high school, but that shit is not explained to the guys. 
Right. We never had like anyone sit us down and be like, okay, this is what a period is. <laughs> like, this is what that is. No, you learn from either movies or from other dudes. Like, and that's, and that's not, not good. That's not good. <laughs> so now the girls are very much monsters. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> in wandering the hallways, bleeding. <laughs> like, <laughs> not, not even joking. Like, literally, that's how a lot of people viewed women in the oh day. Oh, my God. You're on your period? What? Oh, God. Yes. And some we got guys, that a lot. <laughs> and some guys don't even fucking touch them with that period blood because they'll turn to dust or something. <laughs> Like some dudes are f- afraid of it. Like, okay, oh, she's well, on that time of the month, man. I got to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but luckily, like my guy friends were like, "What's this period thing about?" <laughs> yeah, see, there were a few who were like, "Okay, so what's this?" Oh, okay. Get the fuck on. <laughs> So what's this period thing going on? <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So they're like, you're not gonna die. No, I'm not <laughs> gonna die. Kind of feels like it, but not going <laughs> to. <laughs> oh, and then <laughs> period cramps aren't that bad. Fuck you, bro. How many times did you hear that? I don't know. Probably seven hundred times in my lifetime. Good Christ! How would you know? Like, how would you know if it's not that bad? I don't know. I think because the only thing we have. To fucking compare it to is getting kicked in the nuts. I don't think it's on par. I feel like if you got kicked in the nuts and it lasted for a week, maybe. <laughs> like <laughs> the biggest thing on par with that is kidney stones. I've heard. Oh, yeah. I've never had one, but that's good. I've heard they're bad. Never had a period either, <laughs> but but I'm not gonna say. Oh, I'm, uh, that's not bad. And if, if you told a guy that you were on your period, they'd be like, no, I know you're being such a bitch. Oh, now I heard that a shit ton. <laughs> like the whole, oh, she's a bitch because she's on her period. I don't know, dude. She might be a bitch because you're an asshole. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly it. <laughs> oh, anyway. anyway. So the girls sneak out to go kidnap uh, Trina Sinclair's dog. She's the popular girl that pushed Bridget into the dead dog yeah, yeah how did they not know this dead dog was there first of all on this lacrosse field or on this field before they started I, playing uh, lacrosse? Yeah, okay i don't know because as somebody who was like in middle school at least like just ritually fucking tortured i would while you're walking somewhere you would keep a constant eye out for things that didn't fit if i saw a dead dog in the middle of a field i'm going the complete opposite direction and around the school to get to where i'm going because something's bad is going to happen to me and it's going to involve this dead dog that shouldn't be here <laughs> they're going to blame you for yes the dog. something bad's going to happen so anyway they go to kidnap trina sinclair's dog and when they get there the dog is dead yeah so they try to move the dog and can't and they think that ginger has dog blood on her until they realize it's actually her period uh so then she calls it the curse it is <laughs> and as they're going to leave ginger gets attacked by this wolf thing okay okay my only real complaint about this movie and, and not so much ginger later on when she's a werewolf mm-hmm. but this thing right here doesn't look like a werewolf to me it looked like a naked man. Yeah, like a mole rat or yeah. something. You know, it just does not scream werewolf. Like, no. First of all, it's very hairless. <laughs> like It has yeah. little hair to it. Um, and it's just, I don't know. That's my only big complaint because it looks good for what it is. Because they, they don't use any CGI in this movie. Okay. And so, like, it, the werewolf itself looks good. But at the same time, it kind of looks like I could probably take this thing. Like, <laughs> yes. like I'm like, I might, if I knew it was coming for me, I might be able to take it. Right. <laughs> like, I don't know. I might not survive, but it's going down too. <laughs> right. You know, and that's not what you want. Like, I feel like the werewolves has got to be a fucking formidable opponent. You know, Ginger right. is later on. Right. Like, she's scary as fuck. Like, she, that's good. But this thing, what was it? Was it someone's toddler? I don't well, know. Because <laughs> it's not very Maybe. big. I really don't have any complaints about this movie other than that. I, I just think the werewolf <laughs> is just not very, 
It just ain't it. It's not scary. So Ginger finally gets away and they run for help. And when they run across this road, the, the wolf gets run over by a van. And the person driving the van, van's name is Sam. Well, Bridget takes Ginger home and she's healing from her wounds very quickly because she's got these slash marks on her yeah, shoulder. Yeah. But she's healing very quickly. Yeah. And so the curse begins. You know, like I said, it's not... I don't know. It's debatable on whether this is a curse or not. You know, it's it's weird. Well, hang on, hang on. The period is a curse. <laughs> I think the period is worse. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. It seems like if anything, the werewolf just kind of helps her. <laughs> 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 but anyway, uh, now John Fawcett chose not to use any CGI in this movie. Like I said, uh, probably I think that is really what helps it age so well. You know, as I said Um, earlier, I I think, you know, you watch it and just it looks good still, even though this werewolf just I don't know. It just doesn't do do it for me. But Ginger is played wonderfully by Catherine Isabel, who who never seems to fucking age when I see her in things. I agree. Yeah, she's been the same age since the year 2000. (laughs) (laughs) She has it. Well, the same with uh, with uh, uh, Emily Perkins. The, The same thing with her. She just doesn't age. She gets taller. (laughs) (laughs) Like, <laughs> <laughs> she just stays the same these people are immortals it it's could be the only curse. one <laughs> but <laughs> but um now Catherine isabel and she would go on to star in another movie about horror being a metaphor for puberty the remake of carrie and no not the chloe grace moretz film but the the much more superior remake the angela bettis remake from uh 2002 it was i think it was a made for tv movie it was a lot better than a Chloe Grace Moretz movie. I I think I've seen it. Yeah, not a lot of people really remember that 2002 one, but I saw it when it came on TV and I really enjoyed it. I, I, I thought it was great. I think I remember that because I loved Carrie. Like I yeah. watched all yeah, the Carrie. And Angela Bettis was such a good Carrie. Like I think <laughs> yeah. out of the three Carries, she's the second best, you know, after uh, S- Sissy Spacek. Well, yeah. But that's because... Um, that's because Angela Bettis has a normal look to her. Whereas you're trying to tell me that Chloe Grace Moretz is not a popular or desirable girl in high school <laughs> in that, in that other remake. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry. It just wasn't working. Um, now if the chemistry between these two sisters seems really good, that's because uh, th- these two actresses really got along really well. And and here's something odd, but um, that this is very perfect casting. I feel like, for this movie, like just the sisters in general, it took a, like a few, it took a, around six months to find the leads for this movie. Oh, wow. You know, the two sisters, because they needed somebody who fit what uh, the writer wrote. Now, yeah. Isabel and Perkins uh, it also kind of have these careers. And this is really interesting. They kind of run alongside each other. Like really? uh, they both have been in multiple episodes of Supernatural. Uh-huh. Uh, both have done Stephen King adaptations. <laughs> nice. And uh, and they would go on to do uh, two more of these movies together, by the way. Uh, yeah. <laughs> two more Ginger Snaps. Yes, Snap Ginger Snaps, Scott. Um, I'll talk a little bit at the end of how I feel about the sequels. They're, they're okay. Uh, they're, they're perfectly fine. If you enjoyed this and want more of it, then go watch those. Uh, <laughs> the second one being the best. Uh, I think the second one is actually very good. But anyway, like I said, I, I feel like their chemistry really does save this thing from being too boring because it, it, could, oh, yeah. it could be very boring. But I think their love for each other really this, it, it situates this story. Right. Because, you know? yeah. I mean, I will say like this movie, The Werewolf takes a backseat. Right. Really. Until like, you know, the the climaxes of the movie. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a child. I'm sorry. That's OK. <laughs> We're all children at heart. <laughs> so the next day, Ginger ends up being weird and smoking with the guys that um, keep hitting on her. Mm-hmm. And then Bridget asks Sam Miller, the guy that hit the um, the wolf, what he hit. And he says that he hit a lycanthrope. And she's like, yeah, that's what I thought, too. And they, they're like, what? They, they jump straight to werewolves. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Again, I don't. I didn't look like a werewolf. No. I would have been like, I hit a fucking naked mole rat. <laughs> what was that? Was it a mutant mole rat? But I do like this little introductory scene to where Ginger looks like she's starting to uh, grow apart from her sister here. 
Did oh, you yeah. ever have friends or anything like that where this kind of situation happened? Not the werewolf situation. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think any of my friends turned into werewolves. <laughs> But did you lose friends like this, you know, where like all of a sudden they started hanging out with the more popular crowd and you got shoved aside or maybe oh, vice yeah. versa or anything like that? Oh, yeah. Uh, especially when it came to boys. Yeah. It seems like uh, girls had more. Again, I'm speaking from a guy <laughs> situation. I have no clue. So don't <laughs> don't Twitter me or anything like this. But I feel like the girls had more falling out with each other, like full on fucking dramatic fights <laughs> yes. to, that would last years. Yeah. You know. Well, don't date the guy I like, okay? <laughs> I'm so sorry. This has become like the <laughs> our high school stories podcast. I think it's but it's it's very difficult not to talk about that kind of shit when you're watching a movie like this. Right. And that's why I don't understand do these people just not have a period of time where they live through this? You know, I think we all been through high school, so I don't really understand why you wouldn't sit down and be like, man, this movie is relatable. I remember this shit. Probably like, because those people are like popular kids and they loved high school and they want to go back. I don't know why it was so difficult for some people. Why are they 80? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Put on my Robert Zombie album. <laughs> Why are they? Why are they like a fucked up, mentally deranged fucking uh, Sean Connery too? That's what I want. I don't. Robert know. Zombie. Anyway, through the ditches. That's enough. <laughs> <laughs> so Bridget confronts Ginger and says uh, that something's happening, and then she sees that Ginger is growing hair out of her wounds from the wolf. Bridget says that she was bitten on a full moon, and now she is hairy. Alluding to the werewolf. Yeah. Then Ginger starts bleeding like a geyser Ooh. as they're just fucking standing there. So they decide they need, they need to go see the school nurse. And she just doesn't really have anything to say except for that's a normal period. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yes. Really? If oh, I stood, <laughs> if I was on my period right uh -huh. now and I stood no under, well, the underwear normally would like catch that. Okay. If I didn't know I was on my period okay. and I was, say, I just got out of the shower. Okay. Or about to get in the shower because the water stops. See, the guys, there's no shame in learning more. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go ahead. I could stand there and I have before, like, taking my clothes off to get ready to get in the shower. I'm waiting for it to warm up and I look down and there's blood on the ground. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, I didn't know. But does it come out at this fer ferocious of a speed? Like, it could. Like if you sneeze, I guess. Not even sneezing, like it just could. Oh, do you guys hear Night of the Horror file last <laughs> night? They fucking went. It, it it turned into a weird biology <laughs> class. It just does. It's it's fascinating to me. I'm sorry. Like I I'm. I don't know. I don't see that girl not wearing underwear, but also maybe she wasn't. I don't. I know. don't know. One girl in our school got escorted out for not wearing underwear. So I, <laughs> it's very. Was she possible. showing people that she wasn't wearing underwear? I'm assuming so. Yeah. I think she was not wearing underwear for a reason. <laughs> like, right. I think there was some finger blasting going on, but I'm not exactly sure. Hey, there was finger blasting going on with me too, and I wore underwear. So. Hey, you do you. That's all I got to say. <laughs> Kids out there, you do you. You know, just don't get caught. <laughs> Fuck, fuck. I'm going to get some parents' <laughs> letters and shit and lawsuits. No, 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 not the don't get caught part. Safe sex. Practice. Safe yeah, sex. yeah. Wrap it. And don't don't believe them when they say they wrapped it. Because they did. They didn't wrap it. No. <laughs> Look at it. Look at that dick. <laughs> oh, my Make God. Make sure it's got a layer. Stop. I'm not even joking. I think that's the best advice ever. Make sure you look at anything that goes into you. I always learned, like, you just put it on for them. Nah, that's fucking like You make them put that motherfucker on. No touching, no beaver until you put that. I want to see Did you roll you that motherfucker to down to the balls. Did roll it, it down. <laughs> yes. Roll it down to the balls and let me see it. And I want to see you remove it. Yes. Remove it from the done. package. No, I want to see you remove it from after sex. Yes. Yes. I better see. I better not hear a snap <laughs> at all when we're fucking. <laughs> This is scary coming from me. I feel I just pictured myself in a wig talking to some dude. I better see that condom on that dick. Anyway. 
Get on with the thing. <laughs> Getting on with the thing. So <laughs> some of these scenes that look a little odd during the day. I don't know if you've noticed this. There, there are a few scenes that look a little off and they're taking place during the day. I, I don't think so. <laughs> Brittany doesn't know this ass stuff. That's okay. Well, uh, a few scenes were actually shot at night. Okay. And they simulated daytime by using four of these giant 18 kilowatt lamps combined with a diffusion gel. Now, if you're not that sure. That sounds like a fire hazard. <laughs> yeah. If you're not sure exactly what that is, be sure to look it up. No. Nope. But we are talking massive lights. Yeah. <laughs> like these things were so big, they generated enough light to be seen about a mile up into the sky. Oh, my God. Like, so there are a few scenes that you're like, that's a weird daytime. Like, what? <laughs> where are they? That's what's going on. Okay. Like they're using that because the long shooting times and stuff like that. And you're working with teenagers and stuff like that. You're having to work around their times and stuff like that. Um, you have to substitute. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk about the metaphors here. As a woman who's been through puberty, is this an accurate depiction? Is the werewolf metaphor spot on here? No. No? There's not like a beast wanting to get out or anything like that? No. It's more like a sad puppy that's been beat. Oh. oh. And is in pain and just wants to curl up and die. Oh. So, so like if Ginger became a werewolf and just like went under the blankets and just Cried. howled for a while. That'd yeah. Be- That'd be a depressing werewolf movie. <laughs> that would be more accurate. <laughs> You're just watching this like in the theater or something. It's like, I don't. This werewolf is just kind of sad. I just kind of want to pet it. Yes. Bring it tacos. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's kind of how. <laughs> bring chocolate. Guys, guys, guys. Bring your women tacos and pet them. <laughs> I'm joking. Don't pet them. Only like if they want to they be petted. They will shred you. They will shred you to death. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, jo- I'm joking. I'm joking. Women don't become monsters on their periods. The only reason why a woman would become a monster on their period is because you are bugging the ever loving shit out of them. <laughs> it's true. I mean, I don't have to be in my period for you to bug the shit out of me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm anyway, so sorry. anyway. So later at home, their mom makes a cake and for this period. And Ginger automatically thinks that Bridget told their mom, but really their mom found the bloody underwear. Ginger thinks that Bridget told their mom, even though she found the dirty underwear. Mm. So she starts being mean to Bridget and says that she's just jealous. And Bridget's like, yeah, I'm jealous that you're bleeding from your vagina. I feel like I, I don't know. I again, I never had my period, and I never had my mom talk to me about my period. <laughs> it's mostly just boners and my dad telling me to, you know, put a book over it or something. <laughs> but um, seriously, like raising boys is so much easier. <laughs> just, just hide it, tuck it in your waistband, whatever you need to do. Um, <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. But I feel like I feel like their mom. Do moms do this where they completely disconnect and forget what their period was like? I don't know. Because it's like this new, brand new turn of life thing for her. And I'm like, what did you do at your period? Did you have a fucking parade? <laughs> like, no, I told hell, you I mom? was lucky to get a pad. No, I'm talking about mom here. Oh. Like, well, <laughs> d- d- does the fucking memory of having a period go out the window? She's like, you're a woman now. You know what a period means, right? And then it's not good. What? A period. You know what? A, a period. Okay. Most okay, people. Say, most people say like, uh, it means you're a woman now. Blah, okay. blah, blah. That's what I always heard. Okay. It means you can give birth now. <sighs> Our society's really fucked, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Because they're like, oh, you could make babies now. Which makes how I, because I have a reading I want to share about what Ginger represents to me in this yeah. movie. And let me know as a woman, you know, is that kind of really what they're hitting at here because like i want to because like i said i love this movie but i can't relate to these two characters the same way i think a female can relate to them like right. any female you know trans what are you, you know you get what i'm saying <laughs> like females in general i think can relate i am really confused on what gender to use <laughs> half the time i'm sorry people <laughs> I, I apologize you're w- what you're referring I think I'm trying to n- yes because what you're referring to is a cis 
woman. Okay, there you go. Thank the you. The uterus havers. Thank you. The uterus havers. I yeah. think anybody can kind of relate to these two characters a lot more than I can. Yeah. Because I didn't go through the same kind of like deal or deals that they're going through. And not the werewolf story. <laughs> you know, right. I'm talking about the base thing and what the metaphor of the werewolf represents. Right. You know, which is that weird time where you're just becoming what society kind of deems as a monster. Right. You know, I think uh, women can relate to these a lot better than I can because, again, I was just tucking boners, just making sure nobody could see that. <laughs> Completely different. <laughs> you know? And we're tucking period blood, make sure nobody can see that. Because <laughs> you had to learn how to wear pads right. uh, and yeah, do all that stuff. That's true. I, see, And uh, not bleed through your pants. See, and so I think that's why some of these guys out there that have this weird negative thoughts about this movie, I think that's why. It's the same guys in high school who we said earlier, on were like Ugh, ew right. bleeding ew don't like, even talk to me about tampons those are ew but it's like we had a fucking choice like I, we wanted well, to that's do the this? thing because like you hear these guys and it's like oh okay so so you didn't want to focus it on back then you didn't want to learn anything back then because it's you you don't want to see it in your horror movie because it's you like <laughs> We treat it as this big old, like, everybody should have a good time. Like, oh, you got your period. You should be happy about that. But don't fucking tell me anything about it because it's disgusting. And I, like I said, I have a reading of Ginger later on that I think relates to that. Because that is how society treats girls on their periods. Yeah. This wonderful, amazing, almost fucking supernatural thing. But at it's the same time, horrible. ew, you're disgusting. Right. That's... That's okay. That sums up womanhood, not just the period, just womanhood. And I am a dumpy dumb shit who watches movies all day. So if I can get it, so can you, <laughs> gentlemen. <laughs> anyway. So Bridget ends up telling Ginger that she thinks she's a werewolf. Hmm. That Bridget thinks Ginger is a werewolf. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. Sam Miller, the guy that hit the. Yeah. The. Well, for whatever, seeks out Bridget and wants to know what she saw. And B Bridget gets freaked out and just runs away. Then late at night, she sees that Ginger had grown a little tail. <laughs> Which this thing's crazy, man. It's just like weird and yeah. tiny. Anyway, so the next day, Bridget goes to see Sam again and she tells him that these changes are happening to her. She's like talking about the werewolf stuff about herself even yeah. though it's happening to ginger yeah and she says she thinks it's a werewolf but he says that the thing he ran over was too easy to kill to be a werewolf which i kind of agree again is it a mole rat but <laughs> i think that's one of the differences between these wolves and the wolves we've seen this month is the length of transformation like i said you know right. you'll see a lot of complaints about this movie is that there is no transformation scene uh, one of the stupidest fucking reviews i read on imdb <laughs> uh, was this guy who was saying hey, you you know there's no transformation. There's no transformation scene. I don't know if that's how he talks, but that's how it sounded. He was writing. <laughs> and he was like, you look back at a film like an American werewolf in London. And that, <laughs> I think that's the worst possible thing you can do is compare any of these werewolf movies to each other. Right. That's fucking weird. Like, why would you compare this to an American werewolf in London? They are completely two different movies. Th and that's a bro movie. It is. It is yeah. a full on man movie. We ain't talking about whether your dick comes out or like whether you can, <laughs> I don't know, get it up during the werewolf cycle. <laughs> We're not going into any biology in that movie. Right. But with this, like, I feel like, I don't know, like, I disagree. I don't think this movie needs a transformation scene because it is a transformation. She's the transforming whole, the whole yes, thing. Yes, the whole movie. And in, in order for that metaphor of, uh, you know, the werewolf applied to puberty and uh, coming of age, I think in order for that metaphor to really work, it does have to be an entire transformation. Right. Like this whole movie acts as Ginger's transformation. Right. I don't understand how people didn't see that, but okay. Again, I don't do this very often, and some of you may be like wondering, like, why? What is he doing? Why is he stopping the episode dead to like detract from people <laughs> who don't like this movie? Is because every time someone says they hate this movie, not eh, it was okay or 
it was it was good and, or i just didn't like it it just wasn't my cup of tea I'm talking about people who fool on fucking hate this and want to rip it apart in front of you when you say you like it. Right. Like, that's really what I'm kind of attacking here today, because like every excuse they fucking use. And again, this is the sit hit wet male crowd coming at you <laughs> with their their input, which we don't need because there's too many of them. But um, <laughs> but like every Example they use when you ask them why they hate this movie so much, it's always about there's females in my werewolf movie. Right. And or, oh, it's just, you know, I don't need to know about this shit. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I think you might. If you like women. And if you have daughters, for right. God's fucking sakes, if you have daughters, this is kind of a learning experience. Yeah. Especially if you're a single father, you need to learn this shit. Because literally shit. what they have done, because- there's no way you're watching this movie and you're not a horror fan. Right. Like, so what they have done is they've given you this info about kind of what teenagers go through, teenage girls go through, and they've made it digestible for you to understand. Right. This girl is attractive, but at the same time seen as a monster. Right. So then it kind of puts you in a more sympathetic view of your daughter when she's complaining about her icky blood, <laughs> like, you know, like, so I, what I'm really attacking at is these people with their heads up their ass. So, you know, don't feel attacked if you just didn't care for Ginger Snaps. It's fine. <laughs> That's not who I'm after here. So Ginger ends up having sex with uh, this boy named Jason that's been hitting on her or mm-hmm. whatever. And she is a... Uh, very rough with him oh my god he was like screaming in pain (laughs) but later on he likes it i don't know i'm confused that's kind of how it happens with all of us there's always that one girl who goes a little too over the edge with the roughness and then we're like oh oh (laughs) like okay well now i can't get it up unless you're doing that (laughs) formative years you know (laughs) oh my gosh So she goes home and she's crying. So Bridget checks on her. Mm -hmm. Ginger's throwing up in the bathroom and says that she thought she wanted sex, but she wanted to tear everything apart, actually. And you think, like, she ate this dude. Like, I, you know, when you first see this, you're like, oh, shit, he killed. She killed him. (laughs) Right. And Bridget says, where is he? And she says, he's next door. And when they go to check next door, it's not not the kid. Yeah, it's that the makes, dog. They make you think it's the kid, yeah, but yeah. it's the next door neighbor's dog. So Bridget decides that she wants to try piercing Ginger with a silver ring. But when she does it, nothing happens. Because lo and behold, m- most piercing things that are, look silver are not silver. <laughs> yeah, and even uh, Sam kind of says that later on, you know, something about, you know, like he, he got a piercing and it's, it wasn't silver. Like it was just like a fake metal and he broke out in a rash and stuff. And he said, this is real. And he gives her that. Right. I do kind of like the, the werewolf part of this. I do kind of like how like Sam and her are trying to figure this out together. Yeah. He knows a lot about werewolves for a drug dealer in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he's in high school. Is he I think not? he's older. Is he an older dude? Because Ginger mentions it and she was about how old mm-hmm. uh Bridget is compared to him. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Which is really funny because Ginger is playing the older sister here. Yeah. But Emily Perkins is like two years older than <laughs> that's funny. Than Isabel. So the next day Jason brags to his friends about having sex with Ginger. Mm-hmm. And he's got this blood on him. Did he not change his clothes? I, I, I couldn't tell you, man. Like, I don't know. I'm is this some kind of weird trophy thing? Like, look, uh, look, I <laughs> fucked her on her period. Ugh. No, nobody did that because they were too afraid of the period. <laughs> <laughs> right. So then Sam comes to talk to Bridget and says that he has another idea as to what might be going on. Mm-hmm. Well, Ginger is pissed that Bridget told Sam about this. She, then she goes and attacks the mean girl, uh, Trina, mm-hmm. uh, for making fun of Bridget. There's a lot that happens in the scene. <laughs> so Ginger, it's a lot of schoolyard stuff because, yeah. like, Bridget and Ginger are kind of getting into it a little bit, and like they're going back and forth just just a little bit, and like. But it's one of these moments where it's like, don't fuck with my sister. I fuck with my sister. Exactly. (laughs) So, okay. So let me 
break it down. So uh-huh. Sam knows Trina. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they're dating or fucking or whatever they are. Anyways, so when he comes to see Bridget, Trina thinks he's there to see her. We kind of get a little bit from Trina later on. These two have some history or something. Right. And she thinks that uh, Sam is kind of doing the same thing to Bridget to or Bridget, something. Yeah. But it's not really that way. Like right. Bridget and Sam only have met because he hit the naked mole rat. In the <laughs> right. And they're the trying reason. to figure out what's yeah, going that, on. That's the only reason they're hanging out together. But this girl has it in her mind that it, it's, it's a lot of the same shit that we were just talking about. You yeah. Know, you're talking to a guy that immediately means you're fucking him. Right. Like, and, and Bridget is kind of interested in Sam a little bit, you know, because <laughs> right. he does mention later in the movie where he's like, I'm not into you that way. And she's like, oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> like, so it's that way. But at the same time, like you're getting treated like you're talking to this dude and you're getting treated like you guys are fucking right now. Like, like, yeah, you're, you're fucking in the back row or something like that, you know, <laughs> and, and then you're not. Yeah. So. So she knows Sam. Trina knows Sam. Bridget knows Sam. Mm. Ginger now found out that Bridget told Sam. Yes. And Trina makes an offhand comment to Bridget. And Ginger's like, I hate my sister, but you can't hate my sister. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So she beats her the fuck up. And I think that's how it works. In her life. Oh, yeah. It's like, you don't get to fucking do that to my sister. <laughs> no. So then... Jason goes to pee a little later and he is peeing blood, (laughs) which this is what I meant earlier by it is kind of shown as kind of an STD as well, you know, right? Because it's passed to him. Yeah. Which, which I I like that because it's a metaphor for STD is what we're seeing here. Yeah. You know, like, oh, he's got like spots on his face and all kinds of stuff. Well, a little bit later or when he comes out of the bathroom, I'm sorry, Bridget sees him in the hallway and sees blood and, um, then she tells Ginger that she infected him. Like the STD, like you said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I like that. I mean, they don't expand too much on this part of the metaphor here. Like of the werewolf relating to the STD and stuff. Like they don't really expand too much on it. Besides just Jason is becoming one of these things. <laughs> right. uh, like that's basically as far as they go. But I, I think they do kind of make it a little relatable because I'm sure everybody knew of somebody in school that got an STD and shit like that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know about a straight up piss and blood. Dear God. <laughs> it is time to, to go hospital. to the hospital. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh, yeah. I get a little worried when my pee is a little dark. <laughs> like I could imagine just straight blood coming out of my dick. I'm dying. I I'm have dying. to go now. <laughs> Oh, God. And then me with a period. How much blood was there? <laughs> My peed blood. You're like, oh, oh, yeah. I bet you poor baby. <laughs> you could drive yourself to the hospital yeah, now. You're, you're good. Yeah. You're good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so Bridget and Ginger go to see Sam, and he suggests infusing an extract of monkshood, which is a perennial plant only found in the spring and this is the fall yeah because halloween's coming like yeah um again i would have i, I kind of would have liked more time with sam because yeah. he seems to know i know he's a drug dealer but you know uh, uh, drug dealers <laughs> don't necessarily know this why does he know so much about yeah, werewolves? why does he know so much about werewolves like <laughs> is he looking this up like because i mean this is the year 2000 the internet was still a little little young at the time so uh, why does he care so much yeah, about something that he hit in the road yeah, that's like, dead now? Th- that's what i mean by like it, the more backstory of sam would have been nice but we fuck we don't get that no. <laughs> we don't get that so later that night bridget is walking home and trina stops her and wants her dog back she says that she saw ginger with him well ginger comes out and <laughs> ends up grabbing trina and pulling her into the house and Bridget wants her to stop. And Ginger says this is her fault because she chose Sam uh, over Ginger. And mm-hmm. whatever happens now is her fault. I'm going to sound like a dumbass dude right now. Uh-huh. But is what's going on in this, is this an overdramatic like, metaphor for how your moods change during a period? Again, I'm going to sound like the dumbest fuck dude in this episode but like is that really what they're kind of getting at here in the movie 
Like because because it does seem like Ginger just snaps and fucking <laughs> goes into a rage. You know what I mean? I think that has more to do with the werewolf than it does the period. Does it? Yeah. Well, well the, the werewolf is a metaphor for the period, though, as well. The hormonal change when you're a teenager. Well, if that's what it's for, then I don't like it because that's just stereotypical period then. Yeah, you think so? You think they're skirting a little too close to stereotypes? Uh, yeah. Again, we're reading way too much into this. I, I really don't know if that's what they were aiming at. But, you know, I just, I am I find it interesting if this relates to you in any way, like when you were a teenager mm -hmm. going through a hormonal change. But I think all teenagers are quick to anger, whether they have a period well, or not. That's a good point. That's a good point. So I think this is maybe this more really of a teenager thing. This is just thing. a teenager thing, really. Yeah. Uh, what, I'm, what I'm reading too into. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. That's why it's like more of a werewolf thing. Okay. Not not the period has the period has nothing to do. I totally get you. Do do you like go through well, I know you now, but I feel like <laughs> when you're first going through that shit, it's very confusing and probably oh, yeah. harder back then. Oh yeah. So I assume you don't know how to re regulate a lot of stuff. So like do you go through like uh emotional shit and stuff when you're a teenager having a period? Bro. Yeah. I, I, now you've explained this to me, but I'm asking yeah. as a dumb fuck because I'd like, you know, if anybody's listening to this that might have teenage girls, <laughs> I think maybe we can help a little, you know. So I knew that I was going to start my period either that day or the day, the next day, because I would cry over the stupidest shit. I still do it now sometimes. Uh -huh. Like when I'm about to start my period is like pick a fight that's not necessary and then fucking cry about it like be victim oh yeah yeah and that's how i knew i was going to start my period i just be like crying driving down the road because i saw a bird and i would just cry and i'm like oh fuck i'm gonna start my period because <laughs> the way i see it is ginger wouldn't necessarily be doing this to trina like she's doing if she wasn't going through some kind of change, you know, uh, the werewolf being what this is, you know, I think she's doing it because she feels all this rage inside like this. Okay. She wants to eat something like she talks about it a couple uh, of times. Uh, OK, that's another good. I'm sorry, you guys. <laughs> I stopped the episode dead. But that's another good question is like, do you get like. Like when you're going through a hormonal change, like I said, for dudes. You jerk off and you're good. You're just jerking <laughs> off a lot when you're going through pu puberty. But like for women like who are taught, and I'm sorry, this is coming from the South, you guys. So th you may not relate to what I'm about to say here. But like for girls who are taught that masturbation is bad, like it, it is here, it's less acceptable for girls to masturbate than guys. Oh, yeah. You know, in Oklahoma. Right. Like, so like, I mean, because you hear it all the time. When we were in high school, you know, dudes jerking off and sit like that. Mm -hmm. It's just more acceptable than like women masturbating. That's weird. <laughs> That's gross. <laughs> right. You know, so I wonder like if if a female is going through that in high school uh, as a teenager, like she's going through that and she's told that masturbating is this sin or like some shit like that. Would the build up be like that? You just want to rip some shit apart? No. Oh, okay. I just, <laughs> you, you get what I'm asking, though. Like, yeah. Like, I wonder if if that kind of buildup, like, of sexual frustration just causes you to fucking get kind of crazy, you know? Like, I know no. it would probably me if I was told, don't touch your dick. Like, I probably would have been fucking a di an asshole, you know, in high school. From my experience, we didn't talk about masturbation at all. Like, it wasn't a thing. We didn't talk about it. Right. I like if girls masturbate, we didn't speak about it. Like I think it's very you just unhealthy. Did it, you just did it, or you didn't do it. Like which is weird. I and think we it, didn't talk about I th it. I think more talk about how masturbation is probably the most positive thing ever. <laughs> like, <laughs> should be implemented more uh, in in schools. I think like young people should be taught that masturbation is not a fucking weird crime. And I honestly think that. Masturbation should be the alternative of sex. And I, I don't know how we got into masturbation talk. <laughs> we are turning this into a Dr. Ruth program. I really think that you're looking way too much into her rage. I, I, and it's skirting those lines I don't like. It's really kind of making me angry. <laughs> Please, well, let it out. Let that rage out. Would you get what I'm saying? That's why I keep telling you I'm coming at this 
at a guy's point of view. Right. Who has been taught and probably taught the worst things ever. I'm 30 fucking four. That's why I keep telling I we have to start young at teaching boys about girls. Right. Like you we have to teach each other about the other opposite gender. <laughs> yes. You know what? We've got to teach these things early or you're going to have me, a 34 year old who are like, did you get mad when you didn't masturbate? You know what I mean? <laughs> like, no, it, I think it's very <laughs> important that we teach people these things. And that's why I'm coming at it as a guy point of view and asking you questions because then you have the opportunity to right. correct me. You know right. what I mean? So. No, I don't think the rage has anything <laughs> to do with the period. Okay. I think that has okay. to do with, being a teenager uh -huh. and being a werewolf. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and wanting to eat things. <laughs> Let, we should move on. <laughs> yes. We should Let's move on. Please do that. Th this will be a shooting the shit. Maybe we should hold back some of this I for shooting the shit. I said what I needed to say. Okay. I got you. Am I pissing you off? Yes. <laughs> really? What am I pissing you off about? Because you want more for me than I have. You're like, you're oh, like, no, no, I don't want any more. I just <laughs> want to be corrected. I did correct you. It, and you did. That's okay. what I mean. Like, that's but then you're like, can... it's a shoot in the shit episode. No, we said what we said. There's no more to say. Oh, yeah. well, I meant more about the talking about the education. System oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> we don't have to I'm sit sorry. here and discuss the I was the like, politics. do I really have to go over this again? No, I said it no. like three times. No, 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 no. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but but I, this does bring up a good point. Well, movies like this are very important. Oh, yeah. Because they get a conversation going. Oh, yeah. You know, like whether <laughs> I'm pissing people off because I'm a dude <laughs> or not, it does get the conversation flowing. Oh, you know? of course. Yeah. Bridget wants Ginger to stop attacking Trina. Yeah. Ginger says that this is her fault because she chose Sam and whatever happens now is her fault. Well, Trina ends up slipping and hitting her head on the, the, like, the corner of this counter uh -huh. and instantly dying. You know, the amount of movies that have shown me that, like, that instantly kills someone, <laughs> is that true? <laughs> like, does that instantly kill someone to get hit in the head I like that? I don't know, because we've had all uh, all of our kids fucking hit their heads on the corner of the counter <laughs> Oh, <before>. shit. <laughs> Sometimes you're like, <gasps> like oh, my God. Yes. Especially if you hear it and you don't Ooh. see it. Ooh, oh, fuck. And then you want to cry with them. You're like, oh, Oh, yeah, God. you're sitting there like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I hit I my head too. <laughs> I was there with you in spirit. <laughs> yes. And they're just crying. Oh but my I, I just wonder, because like, it's the same thing with like temples in movies. Like if somebody gets hit in the temple, it immediately kills them. It's like a one hit kill. <laughs> <laughs> Is that true? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. They have to get rid of this body real quick because the the parents get home right as this happens. Like the garage door opens their home. Um, but they play it off like they're taking pictures of them dead. Yeah. But then we see that they hid the body in the freezer. Yeah. But later that, that night, they transfer Trina from the freezer to the shed outside. And Bridget asks if Ginger would eat her. And she says, no. <laughs> <laughs> hey, eat her real quick. Like, you. I don't think she said it like that. No, but like that's kind of what she's implying. Like, right. Ew. <laughs> No, they just dug a hole under the shed. Yeah, yeah. Well, Bridget then makes a plan so that they don't get in trouble. And they're going to have Ginger fake sick. Then they're going to make a plan to leave for good. Like, they're going to run away from them. Yeah, right. Because, you know, that's going to solve their problems. It's going to solve the werewolf issue. <laughs> <laughs> right. But we see that they left um, two of Trina's fingers in the yard. Yeah. Because she got frozen off. They got frozen off. By the way, mm -hmm. this freezer must be hella fucking cold. Man, I'm telling you, like, uh, this is another thing that horror movies have where, like, you you would put a person in a freezer, they're frozen completely the next day. <laughs> like, and, I want those freezers. <laughs> right? And these two girls aren't going to be able to move a frozen body. Well, Ginger is strong. Like, oh, we do get to see okay. that. So maybe her strength But is... you know that this this body is going to have, like, hamburger meat, pork chops, like a roast <laughs> hanging off of it. Because, you know, all of that shit freezes together. Oh, man. That's Sunday's roast hanging off this bitch's body. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and not even her ass. Just her foot or something. <laughs> so the next day, 
Jason sees Bridget at school and wants to know what the hell is going on because he is now growing a tail and going crazy, he says. By the way, he uh-huh. pushes her into this janitor's closet. She is freaked the fuck out. I would be freaked the fuck out. I'd be more freaked the fuck out about this than the fucking like whole <laughs> werewolf situation. <laughs> yes. I mean, oh God. I don't want to be in a closet with you. Like th- th- Another one of life's lessons. Do not go in the closet with anybody. <laughs> no. Unless it's to get your gay best friend out of there, you know, <laughs> let him know it's okay. <laughs> you just get, you just got to reach in there. And... You reach in there, you can pull him out of there. Just say, hey, it's cool, it's, man. It's... it's 2021. We're all good with it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> anyway. Anywho, <laughs> where did that go? This episode keeps veering off the fucking train tracks. <laughs> <laughs> and there's not a very good time frame in this, but uh, the, the it, pacing of this movie, it's good, but it does kind of like hop real quick. You know, the, you, you got like oh, next day. Oh, t- here's night. You know, what I mean? right. well, it's night now yeah. <laughs> and they're all at home having dinner together, the family and Ginger's being a bitch and the mom wants to know what's going on. And then Bridget finds that her mom has monk's hood. She just buys it randomly at the fucking store. Like, what? I I don't know. Check off Monk's Hood. I don't know. <laughs> this right. just comes out of fucking nowhere. Right? Yeah. Like, lucky her. <laughs> they couldn't, like, come up with something better, like All Spice or something. <laughs> I couldn't tell you because, again, <laughs> werewolf lore is like. So many different fucking patterns. It's it's a fucking quilt of different kind of things that werewolves relate to. <laughs> Same with vampires, you know. With vampires, some lore says if you spill some mustard seeds, they have to stop and count them. But <laughs> yes, yes, there's so much dumb shit that goes with this lore. So that this may be something from that that I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Anyway, so. Uh, Bridget goes to tell Ginger that she has this monk's hood now Mm -hmm. and Ginger's trying to cut her tail off (laughs) like that's gonna fucking solve something I don't know I'd probably cut that motherfucker (laughs) off too be in there with the belt sander just a belt sander it fucking helped me out I gotta sand this motherfucker down (laughs) what the fuck anyway (laughs) anyway so the next day, Bridget locks Ginger in the bathroom and she goes to see Sam because yeah. she has this monk's hood. And he says the best way to ingest this would to be in, to inject it. Okay. Yeah. But he's unsure on the dosage and it, he, he says it could be dangerous. But they make the concoction anyway. Bridget goes to find find Ginger, but she's gone. She yeah, yeah. Ginger, she busts or, out of yeah, the yeah. Ginger bolted yeah out of the bathroom. Oh, by the way, when they're making this concoction, we see Ginger like fighting her way in the <laughs> yeah, fucking bathroom. Yeah. She's growing like longer fingernails now. Like she got the yeah, rage. She's really in her. starting to turn here. And I, I like yeah. the way she looks here later on. I think it's pretty cool. Like of all the different ways they could have made her look, it's pretty interesting the way yeah. they go. And I like that they changed her teeth. Yeah. And they changed Jason's teeth too. Um, Bridget actually runs into Jason before she runs into Ginger and he tries to attack her. And so she shoots him with the injection instead and he falls down. Then he kind of like comes to. Yeah. And he seems kind of back to normal and he's like uh i gotta go to class <laughs> and walks away but he walks off with this fucking needle in his throat <laughs> or his well, neck. this guy has had a fucking week man <laughs> this guy's had a problem he lost his virginity well i don't know if he lost his virginity but he had sex got a werewolf std uh-huh. <laughs> got cured from this werewolf std <laughs> Man, I'd be transferring schools at this point. It's like, I'm done with this, man. I can't do this anymore. So Bridget ends up finding Ginger and she has killed the principal. She says that she's pissed because Bridget locked her uh, locked her in the bathroom. Bridget says that they need to clean this up and she goes to get the janitor's cleaning supplies. And when she comes back, Ginger has attacked and killed the janitor. <laughs> God damn it. And then... She just leaves Bridget there and says that she uh, implies that she's going to go attack yeah. Sam also. 
And now, since more traditional uh, practical effects are used in this movie, Catherine Isabel had to spend about seven hours in the makeup chair to create oh. these me- metamorphosis scenes. Seven hours. And like I said, it looks good, though. Like, yeah. again, you know, the the practical effects in this movie really help with its age. You know, like I think if a lot of this was all CG, like that awful An American Werewolf in Paris that everybody keeps telling me it needs to be reevaluated. <laughs> Like if it was all CG and stuff like that, it would look, this movie would have aged terribly. Oh yeah. Like, I don't think it would have, it would be considered the classic that it is now if, if, if uh, Fawcett hadn't gone specifically with non CGI effects, but yes, she had to spend seven hours in the makeup chair getting this shit applied. And of course about two hours to get it off. (laughs) Now, um, the hardest thing she dealt with, the hardest things that really fucking weighed her down were the fact that she also had to wear contacts, which made her vision terrible and she could barely see. Oh no. Uh, Another thing was the full cosmetic, the full facial appliance that she has. Uh, It got, it gave her a permanent runny nose. So her nose was just constantly running. And I'm sure the fact that everybody was getting sick around her didn't help. They had to like put cotton swabs in her nose to stop this fucking shit from running out and stuff. So she was going through hell when she did this. Catherine Isabel was. That's why I'm like, why the fuck did they waste her? In uh, Freddy versus Jason, like two years after this or three years after this, because this was the year 2000 when this came out and Freddy versus Jason came out in 2003 and she plays like a bit part. Oh, really? like she's barely in that movie. She kind of just gets mutilated later on in the movie by Freddy. But like, I'm I don't know, man. Why wasn't she the lead? I feel like Catherine Isabel really proves herself in this movie and she wouldn't really get. Uh, too much of a lead role until like, oh, I think American Mary, uh, she gets the lead in that. And she does an amazing job. Like, I think both of these actresses in this movie, like, are really good. Oh, yeah. So while working outside, the parents find Trina's fingers and the mom says that they see fake, that seem fake like it's just part of the girl's props. Yeah, because they've been used to this. Uh, she's been used to this kind of shit for a while. Right. So she just puts them in a container and puts them in the fridge. I wouldn't have done that. I, I'm thinking not. I don't know if I trust my kids that much. <laughs> right. <laughs> like if I find a, like a severed head in Lily's room tomorrow, <laughs> I'm not going to think, oh, hey, <laughs> that's <laughs> it's just a prop. It's just a prop. <laughs> right. <laughs> The mom then goes to find the girls and she runs into Bridget as she's walking down the street. So she picks her up. The mom says she won't let anyone take them away. (laughs) So she is going to light the house on fire so they can start over. (laughs) This is a little dramatic. This is a very supportive mom, though, I feel like. I don't think she quite understands what's going. No, she thinks that they killed Trina. Yeah, yeah. There's like we'll just we'll just fucking light the house on fire, get the fuck out of here. And like <laughs> we'll I said, start Mimi, over. Mimi Rogers does a wonderful job in this movie for what she's given. She she's not given too much to chew into here, but it yeah. is really good, you know. <laughs> yes. So Ginger goes and she finds Sam, and um, she looks completely different now. Like her hair has changed colors. Yes. Everything is just different. And she starts to seduce him. And he goes with it at first, and then he rejects her. So she starts to attack him because she cannot take this rejection. Does that happen? I feel like that's a predominantly male thing. Like <laughs> when a guy's rejected, it becomes violent. Right. Not normally the girl. No. no, no. Bridget shows her loyalty to Ginger by cutting her hand and then putting her bloody hand together with Ginger's bloody hand. Mm-hmm. Like a blood sister. Th- yeah, it's a you pack. guys are already fucking yeah. blood sisters. That doesn't make any sense. Well, not uh, not this <laughs> not way. werewolf sisters. Because now she's become, she's put herself as becoming a werewolf. That's Bridget right. Yeah. That's right. So they go to leave and Sam attacks Ginger. He like hits her in the head with mm-hmm. a shovel. Well, Bridget tells him about the cure that monkshood really did yeah, work. Yeah, really worked. But she had to use it on Jason so she needs to get get some for Ginger now. Yeah. So uh, Sam, like, he's like, okay, I'll take you guys home. By the time they get home, Ginger is a full-blown wolf now. And Sam and Bridget in the house to make this concoction. Yeah. Um, So they can inject Ginger. 
Sam goes to give her the shot and he gets a, he ends up getting attacked and he is dead. And Wolf Ginger <laughs> chases Bridget all through the house and Bridget runs to their room and tries to get Ginger to stop uh, by like talking yeah, to her. Yeah. Which, by the way, this scene here at the end, this climax of the movie, like it's it's brutal, man. Oh, she yeah. murders Sam like a fucking <laughs> oh god, like because he sit, she first finds him sitting there like just kind of like in shock, and then just Bridget comes out of nowhere, fucking or er, Ginger comes out of nowhere, eats him, <laughs> right. and then like she, I I don't know, it's very it's very good. Like I think that's why like. You know, this whole movie has been kind of melodramatic up until now. Yeah. And this payoff at the end is perfect. Yeah, because uh, Bridget's hiding all over the house and Ginger's like chasing her around. Yeah, it's cat and mouse, which I don't really care for, but it's good. That's they, why they I didn't good. go into detail yeah, about yeah, it. You don't have to. It's cat and mouse. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. And like Bridget ends up having to like kick in a like some drywall to like get yeah. through and shit like but it's good like yeah. like it, it's a good final scene of the movie it wasn't too long no i think that no, was no, the fits. good part yeah. yeah so she tries to get ginger to stop just by talking to her she's like mm -hmm. i'm your sister blah 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 well ginger ends up jumping <laughs> going to like jump on bridget but she has this knife yeah and she ends up jumping onto this knife and uh and die she's dying she's yeah. bleeding out and bridget just sits with her and looks at pictures on the wall and she's uh crying as Din ginger is dying which i think like throughout the movie you get the feeling like i said the the way this movie works is on these two girls relationship and yeah. on their chemistry that they have and i think them having so much chemistry the actors and stuff having so much chemistry really helps sell this and ha this ending we get is a tragedy yeah you know which i i don't know i like it when my werewolf movies end with a tragedy <laughs> you know like you know, it's got to right yeah it just seems like that's the proper way to end these movies right has to be in a tragedy like an american werewolf in london which i'm not comparing the two but like an american werewolf in london that ending was perfect you right. know he he dies at the end and ginger dies at the end of this you know it's it's a perfect ending for yeah. what this is uh but like i said you know their chemistry really helps sell the emotional part of uh what we get here you know because right. we when we do scenes and stuff when you do scenes it's real kind of rushed and we get through it just so we can discuss like we are now i'm sorry no 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 it's perfect <laughs> <laughs> it's perfect we don't need a recreation of the entire movie people have seen this movie right but like if these two actors didn't have the chemistry that they have, and if they couldn't sell that they were these two sisters that were very much in love with each other and on a sisterly level, right, they're very right. much in love with each other. We, it wouldn't be the emotional gut punch that it is at the end because you kind of do see that Ginger is going to die. Right. Like that's pretty much the only way this is going to happen, <laughs> but you don't really see how emotional it's going to be here at the end until right. it happens. And I think it's a wonderful ending. Ginger Snaps premiered at the Munich Fest, uh, Fantasy Film Festival in uh, August of 2000. And now, despite it being called one of the standouts at that festival and several other festivals, it kind of died out soon after, mostly because of a lackluster release strategy. This did get a theatrical run, but small cities and stuff oh, like okay. that. A small run and stuff like that. So mostly... What happened was this movie found success by word of mouth and eventually found its audience on uh, HBO. Now, HBO is where I saw it first in the early 2000s, but it also had the benefit of being uh, involved in the early DVD boom of the early 2000s. You remember when everything switched to DVD yeah. back in the early 2000s. Well, this was one of the things that was there, you know, so it had the benefit of that. It, it was involved in that. And that's kind of how it spread. You know, HBO and DVD, and it's had pretty much nothing but positive reviews for the most part. And it's been called one of the smartest horror films of the early 2000s. Oh, I, I kind of agree. Yeah. You know, like I said, it, we look back at those early 2000s. Some of some horror fans look back and then and, and most of the time what sticks out to us is the garbage. Right. That kind of came out, which I like hot garbage, but <laughs> that's beside the point. But that kind of tends to stick in some people's craw. And so they don't really 
they don't really look below that surface to find the, the real gems of the early 2000s. Like I said, you're American Psycho. Right. Uh, this movie, Hollow Man, there, there's really good movies that came out around this time. Mm -hmm. And this, um, I would say, is, yeah, it's one of the smartest ones. Like, it's... Oh, I agree, yeah. It carries itself in a serious way, but it has enough dark humor and enough, like... Well, you got the metaphors and stuff like that. It, mm -hmm. it it also has enough of that feminist kind of feature to really put it ahead of its everything else that came out around this time. It has a knowledge about itself. I was gonna, I was about to say it teaches you something. Yeah, it has quite the knowledge about its characters too, especially for a, a male to be directing this. I think that's an achievement because <laughs> he very well could have took uh, his writing partners took Karen Walton's uh, writing and just turned it around and made this just a straight up, just werewolf movie. Right. You know, but it, it is very smart. Now, <laughs> now it's not without its negative reviews, as I've mentioned, uh, as most people who hate this movie say the puberty metaphor is too on the nose or it's just too feminist. Isn't that just your favorite complaint this day and age? Too I never, I never fucking heard this complaint in the early 2000s about this movie. Right. Never heard this complaint until now. That tells you something about the world we're living in now. Yeah. <laughs> like even you go on IMDb, people are like, God, this was boring. The people who didn't like it, what? like this is a boring movie. I didn't like this movie. It's boring. And then you get into the 2020s. And dudes are like, oh, fucking women, <laughs> fucking vaginas in my goddamn horror movie. It's like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Shouldn't it be getting better, not worse? <laughs> like, I don't know what's going on. But anyway. I don't either. Anyway, which all brings me to my next point. I think it's a I think this is a wonderful example of how a feminist horror movie can be done amazingly. I'm going to have to agree. It is, I feel like the feminist, like, I, I'm saying feminist a lot, but the feminism is mixed in so well with the horror right. uh, tropes and stuff to where you could watch this as just a normal werewolf movie. You don't have to read between the lines like I've been doing. You don't have to be like, is that how women end? You know, my thing is, <laughs> I think it, it's wonderfully done. I don't think it's too on the nose. I mean, it's there. Right. But I feel like the thing people are perceiving as too on the nose is just the movie not treating you like a dumbass. It's kind of just being like, hey, this is what this movie's about. <laughs> right. You don't have to focus on that, but it's here. Right. <laughs> you know, I don't think it's too on the nose, though. I, I feel like it'd be too on the nose if they were like, God, you're acting like a real bitch or something. <laughs> there's nothing like that in this movie. Right. It's it's kind of implied, but there's nothing <laughs> like that in this movie. Um, I, I don't know. I mean, here's my reading on Ginger and what she represents in this movie. She shows the duality teenage girls have to face. Is she sexually? She's sexually attractive. Right. She's desirable. I mean, there's a scene where she's walking down the hallway and everyone in the school is noticing her. Mm -hmm. You know, she's sexually desirable. But all at once, she's also monstrous and this supernatural fucking demon <laughs> from hell. <laughs> right. You know? And I feel like, she, you know, she's human and she's an animal. And I'm sure many girls... And women feel that society sees them as this monstrous beast. The only positive attributes are their looks. Until that goes away, then they're just a monstrous beast that gets to be thrown away. Yeah. That's exactly it. it you're, you're sexual until you're not sexual. And most of the time you're not sexual after you've had all the children. Right. Once you're past your your societal given beauty stage. Right. You know, which is basically anywhere past your 30s. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's when the world stops giving a shit about you because you're unfuckable as society sees you. Yeah. That's what I think Ginger really represents in this movie. That's why I say I think this is a wonderful feminist movie. Right. Like I think it, it, like I said, I don't understand how I read this and these other guys don't. Other than they just don't want to. <laughs> They're fucking meatheads. That's all there is. Yeah. To it. 
Now, of course, there were sequels, Ginger Snaps 2, Unleashed, and Ginger Snaps Back, The Beginning, which uh, that third one served as a prequel. Those were both shot back to back in the year 2000. Now, and now the only way those got made were after the DVD sales. <laughs> That's what made this a success. I, Ginger Snaps did pretty good at the box office. Like, but it wasn't until the the DVD sales and stuff like that. Wow. If this had a better distribution and it was more widely <laughs> spread out, I think this movie would have made a shit ton more money than what it did. But anyway. Did it have something to do with it being in Canada? It's Canadian. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it, it just didn't do very well. The UK didn't get it until the year 2001, you know. Oh, wow. Yeah. So it, like I said, HBO is when I heard about and saw this. I didn't know anything about this movie <laughs> besides a Fangoria article, oh. um, which I was reading Fangoria back in 2000. But anyway, um, they now in the year 2020 in October, I believe they did announce a television series was being made. But with COVID, uh, like many projects, I'm I'm not sure where the fuck that is now. I've not heard a damn word from it. It's probably dead. COVID kind of killed a lot of those projects that were getting up and going. I don't know what I think about that. I from what I from what I've seen from everything that's been coming out and stuff <laughs> that has been going into series and television series and stuff. To yeah. me, it'd probably be a fucking Netflix series and it'd probably be way too close to 13 reasons why. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think it would have been ruined. So I kind of just leave it alone. Those three movies are fine. The sequels are okay. Nothing really quite comes as close as this movie mm -hmm. because I think it's so universally relatable right you know or whether you're older older now you can relate back to the year 2000 when you're in high school you know or, <laughs> yes. you, know, you, you relate to those times and the things you see them doing in this movie not just like oh, oh i remember when there was no cell phones <laughs> what i'm talking about is the emotional period right they capture that perfectly in this movie because they don't say what year it is or anything no, no. like that. And we don't need that. You don't. And I think that's what makes it kind of timeless, man. It, yeah. It's pretty good. I, I I would like to know if anybody younger relates to this movie. You know what I mean? Relates to it now. Maybe like someone our daughter's age or something like that. I'd like to know if they relate to this at all. Like maybe. <laughs> that'd be kind of cool to know. Maybe we should have her watch it. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. Yeah. I, I think it's I think it's good. I think it's a learning experience. But anyway, to me, Ginger Snaps is an all around good movie, even as someone who can't fully relate to the feminist aspects. You know, I can relate to how being a teenager was and how bad puberty fucking sucked. <laughs> and it's a good example of how a werewolf can be used effectively as a metaphor. You know? Yeah. And it's a good werewolf movie. I mean, it hits all the notes. <laughs> you know, somebody gets bit by the werewolf. They turn into the werewolf. They deal with turning into the werewolf. People die. It's it's good. Right. It's right. perfectly fine. <laughs> Would I call it the greatest movie ever made? No. But it's, it's a good movie. But anyway, <laughs> enough of what I think. What did you think about Ginger Snaps? From the year of our Lord, 2000. What the? Why does everybody say that? Anyway. I don't know. I just say it to be funny. <laughs> So I, I liked this movie. It's it's a movie that I'm really surprised I haven't seen before. It, it's kind of right down your fucking alley. I was alley. about to say, it is, it really is my kind of movie. Yeah. Um, As far as like going deep into the metaphors and stuff like that, I didn't look at it like that. I mean, a little bit, because it's kind of hard not to. When we do these movies, I don't, I don't try to taint them for you. Like, because I wasn't like before Britney went into this movie, I wasn't like, oh, this is all about puberty or anything like that. Right. Oh, they wrote this this way. I like you to watch it with fresh eyes to see if you because I feel like if it was on the nose, wouldn't you have been like, <laughs> God, this is fucking stupid or anything right. like that? Like, God, this is on the nose or anything. <laughs> yeah. like, um, But you know, I mean, it's uh, it's not hard to see the uh puberty aspect of it and stuff right, like that right. like do you quickly put two and two together yeah. it, it's there if you want it to be there and right. it's there if it's not there if you don't want it to be there <laughs> right but it's a genuinely good movie and as far as the werewolves 
Yeah, that was the biggest letdown. <laughs> <Right>. <clears throat> Even though I love this movie, it's one of my favorite werewolf movies. Yeah. It, the, the werewolves themselves are kind of a letdown. Yeah. They're not as uh, beastly as I'd like it to be, but you're working with a budget of four point something million dollars. You know, <laughs> we didn't have the. God damn, that's a that's lot of money. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. <laughs> Every time you say that, I'm like, um... I know that is a lot of money. What I'm talking about. You know, I think I'm going to set a fundraiser for two grand and I'm going to make my movie with that. <laughs> like people are like, $4.2 million. And I'm like, oh, the movie I can make. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, God, that's sickening. But anyway, <laughs> anyway, so we loved Ginger Snaps. I think this was a good way to wrap up the month with a pretty good movie. It's yeah. not it's not as polarizing as last week's movie. <laughs> you know, this is cut and dry. Just nice werewolf. Oh, man. So that's Werewolf Month. It is, you know, it was fun at the very beginning. <laughs> and then it started to slog in the middle there, man. Oh, yeah. I don't know if we can do a month of one movie monster. No. No, a month of one monster is kind of a lot. It's a lot. I think we have more fun doing directors. <gasps> and that's what's happening <laughs> next month for Christmas. Now, I know... A lot of you are probably like, what are they doing for Christmas? No, are they doing Jack Frost? Ew. The Killer Snowman? Yeah. Are they doing uh, a fucking uh, episode on uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2? Garbage mm. Day. Mm. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are doing zero Christmas themed movies. Whoop, whoop. I know. We are thinking outside the box again. For Christmas, you know, last year we did an Evil Dead Christmas. Well, this year we are focusing on one director solely, and you will find that out Wednesday after this episode is, you know, be sure, by the way, you know, be sure to follow us on social media and you will, I drop the next episode, what it's going to be that Wednesday of each week, you get to learn the next episode. Mm -hmm. And, mon you know, you'll get updates on all our social media when new episodes are out and stuff. So follow us there. Now, for you Patreon members, <laughs> <laughs> you're going to already have the list of movies for this month and January. That's right. Dun, you're going to get two dun. months of what's coming on <laughs> in the next fucking. Ah, this is probably the most epic thing we've ever done. I think is I don't. It? This is in scale. This is crazy. Because <laughs> because, OK, we are doing four movies. Oh, I was like four movies all directed by the same person. One of my favorite directors, four movies all directed by the same person in December. In January, we will start the new year off. We'll start 2022 off with a two part miniseries on said director. Right. Then. <laughs> For the last three episodes of January, we will do with three movies that inspired that director. So it is a massive, <laughs> massive amount of like, uh, it's going to be awesome. Right. It's going to be awesome. I'm going full movie nerd. Yes, it's stepping outside the horror genre. But like I said, we are a movie podcast in spirit anyway. So deal with it. <laughs> but anyway. Deal with it. Anyway, that's... <laughs> Next week. Next week, man. Bring your birthday cake because it's yes. going to be my birthday. It is going to be Brittany's birthday. <laughs> oh, wow. I have to promote my birthday. Oh, oh well, yeah, you got to. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> until next time, when we figure out just what's happening in L.A., uh, that's the hint I'll give you. <laughs> but, but, okay. Yeah, I know. But I've been so cryptic. Anyway, but until next week, I'm Lee Evans saying stay spooky. And I'm Brittany. Stay horrific. Bye-bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. To get a hold of us and submit your stories, fan mail, and death threats, you can find us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and nightofthehorrorfile.com. Our theme song was written and performed by John Brennan. Used with permission. Find John at shopjb.bandcamp.com and at badtechno.com. If you like what you hear, leave a good review wherever you listen to podcasts and share the show on your social media. See you next week. <laughs>